Today on Hands-On Photography, we're going to talk about HDR. What exactly does HDR mean? Well, it means high dynamic range. Okay, Ant, what does that mean? Stay tuned. I'm going to tell you. Hands-On Photography is brought to you from LastPass Studios. Access everything you need online simply and securely wherever you're logging in from. LastPass makes security for your digital life effortless. Visit lastpass.com slash twit. This is Twit. This episode of Hands On Photography is brought to you by ExpressVPN. Protect your online privacy with one click. For three extra months free with a one-year package, go to expressvpn.com slash hop. Hey, what's going on, everybody? I am Matt Pruitt, and this is Hands On Photography here on Twit TV. I hope you all are doing well. I'm unbelievable as always. This is a podcast where I like to sit down and share different tips and tricks that are going to help make you a better photographer as well as a better post processor. If this is your first time joining this, this episode, go ahead and hit the subscribe button so you can get the episodes automatically each and every week when they're released. We're available on all of the podcast platforms. If you head on over to twit.tv slash hop, that's twit.tv slash H-O-P for hands-on photography. You'll see that we are available on Spotify. We're available on Apple Podcasts. We're available on Google Play or whatever they call their podcast app. We're out there, folks. So go ahead and find me over there. Uh, subscribe to the show. Download the previous episodes so you can get caught up on all of the previous lessons and uh, get your learning on and get better at this world of photography. Thank you for the support and thank you for sharing the show. So now let's go ahead and get into this week's episode. Today, I want to talk about HDR photography, HDR. So what does HDR stand for? High dynamic range. OK, Ant, so you told me what the little acronym stands for. What the heck does it mean? There's a difference there. A lot of people have their own uh, misconceptions about what HDR is, and I hope to clear that up for you today. HDR, when I say high dynamic range, in layman's terms, think about it as wherever your camera can take a photo and capture the brightest of the brightest without losing detail and capturing the darkest of the darkest without losing detail. And high dynamic range, high dynamic range is going to vary from camera to camera. It's not going to be the same uh, variance on a smartphone versus a DSLR or mirrorless. Heck, it's not even going to be the same on two or three different types of DSLRs. It all depends on the sensor technology and all of the good old wonderful computing tech behind the scenes inside of the camera. There is a caveat. Think about uh, smartphones today, especially with the likes of the iPhone and the Pixels and the top Samsung phones out there. Computational photography is being used inside of these cameras to pretty much give you a beautiful, high dynamic range image. For example, if you were to go outside and say uh, like in your backyard or something on a bright sunny day and take a picture of a tree, you're going to see the tree, but you're going to also notice the shadows right up under the tree. In some instances, at least back in the old tech of cameras, you take that photograph and you get a nice bright lit scene. The sky would be super duper blown out. The leaves would have a little bit of specular highlights on it that looks good. And then the shadows would be like totally black. You couldn't tell if it was the grass underneath. You couldn't tell if there if it was tree bark, but it would just be black you would lose all the detail in those shadows and that sky wouldn't necessarily look blue because it would just be all sort of blown out and overexposed but now the computational facade computational side of photography is handling all of that for you and you snap the shot and your image looks pretty good for the most part it's gotten a lot better over the last two or three years or so i'd say that uh but not all cameras have have that capability built into them. Uh, in particular, I can think of the Canon side of things. They would have what what they call HDR mode. And what it does is it takes a bracket of three to five photographs and blend them all together. Now, let's think about that. If you're taking a shot of a scene somewhere, but you want it to have beautiful, high dynamic range, your camera is saying, OK, let me take three shots and blend them all together. 
you probably don't want to do that handheld. You probably want to do that on a tripod. And if you don't have a tripod, you'll need to be really, really still. Uh, so, yeah, we do have that capability with our bigger, better cameras out there. But you have to understand that there are a couple caveats as far as having portability uh, and uh, equipment with you, as well as sometimes you can get away without using the tripod or using the actual cameras built in. You can do like what I'm going to show you today and use software on your computer to handle HDR. Now, again, I hope this clears up the misconception of what HDR is. One of my favorite photographers, uh, Trey Ratcliffe, he's well known for a couple things in photography. First, Burning Man. Second, HDR photography. But the problem is a lot of people assume his HDR photography are those dreamy uh, landscape shots that he takes, takes photographs of. And most of those photographs do have a great high dynamic range, but people assume the way he did all of his post-processing is what HDR meant. Let me show you an example here. So this is something that was, you know, this is a couple of years old or what have you, but if you look at it, it has beautiful high dynamic range. Just the shadows are not totally crushed. You can see the details in the leaves here. Same here, you can see the details. But the overall image has this bit of a, a soft, mystical, dreamy effect to it. It's pretty much called painterly, but that's another story. We'll get into that to another day. Uh, and here's another one. This is a picture, you know, from the wonderful uh, Lord of the Rings movies. And it's beautiful post-process and lots of oversaturation because that was pretty much his style, you know. And he does an amazing job with it. But HDR isn't that bold green or super saturated blues in the water and in the sky. The HDR is the fact that you can see the details in the sky right here in the center of the frame, the brightest part where the most luminos luminosity is, there's still some detail there. There's still detail back here behind this tree. And even in the reflection of the water, the tree, de the tree reflection, there's still detail there. So that is the best explanation that I can give you without totally confusing you. So what I'm gonna do with my shots is I took some photographs as an example to show you inside of Lightroom how you can create an HDR image by melding together, blending together a couple of different images that are snapped at different levels of exposure, because that's exactly what the uh, HDR application inside the cameras are doing. They're just snapping the shots at three different exposures, three to five different exposures, and then blends them all together. So let's hop on over to Lightroom and I'll show you. All right, so I got these three images here. First one, uh, click enter here. And this is simple. I just went to the local golf course at the uh, cart path and just snapped this shot because it was morning time and I thought the sun would look pretty cool. So I got one shot. This is shot number two. And this is shot number three. And you notice that there are three different exposures. Okay, so let's go back to shot one. If you look here at my metadata or EXIF data, it is at 1 320th of a second at f14. The next shot is at 1 100th of a second at f14. And then the following, a little slower shutter at 1 130th of a second at f14. Okay, so now I wanna take these images and break them down a little bit for you. But before I do that, I'd like to take a few minutes to thank this week's sponsor, the folks at ExpressVPN. This episode of Hands-On Photography is brought to you by ExpressVPN. Incognito mode does not hide your activity, even at home. That's why I never go online without using ExpressVPN. The app reroutes your internet connection through their secure servers. Your information is 100% encrypted, and you won't realize it's on. So protect yourself with the VPN that I use and trust. Use my link at expressvpn.com slash hop today and get an extra three months free of ExpressVPN for free on a one-year package. That's expressvpn.com slash hop. Visit expressvpn.com slash hop to learn more. All right, so now let's go right back into Lightroom. I don't know why that pop-up keeps showing up. We're just gonna ignore it for now. All right, so if I look at this image, image number one, this is the one that's really, really dark. I'm gonna go ahead and act like I'm doing some post-processing on it. Okay, so let's take a look at the exposure and the shadows and take a notice of the actual values here 
right there. Right now, the exposure value is set to zero. And as I increase the exposure, of course, the image is gonna get a little bit brighter. And I can take it up to roughly, mm, we'll just say roughly four on the exposure slider before it starts to get way too overexposed. Take a look at the details. And for the record, I did shoot these in RAW. So refer back to where I talked about the difference between RAW and JPEG. And you'll see that I'm able to do this stuff because I'm shooting in RAW and it doesn't totally break down the image. But all right, so if we zoom in, you can see that, yeah, it's, it's a bit of a mess when I really push that exposure up and that's pushing it up to four on the exposure list. Let's take a look at the shadows if we just did the shadows. So we're gonna increase the shadows up all the way to the max of 100. But even looking at this, it's still losing details and it's starting to get a little bit grainy. Okay, so we have our underexposed shot, but we need it to have more shadow detail. So now let's reset it, take a look at our next shot that's slightly more uh, exposed, and we're gonna increase the shadows on that and see the performance, and that's pushed up to 100, and this is looking a lot better in comparison. Okay, so let me show you again. All right, this is shot one that's underexposed, shot two that's almost perfectly exposed, almost, and the shadows look a lot better. The tree detail is clearly visible. And now let's go to our overexposed shot. And I'm gonna push the shadows up to 100. And now it's clearly <laughs> overexposed and very, very bright. But we can still work with all of this. So let's go ahead and reset the values on these images. And we will walk through merging these images together here inside of Lightroom. The trick is you will do a selection on all three images here at the very bottom of the film strip, as I have shown you here. And then you just right click and you say photo merge and then you select HDR. And it's probably going to yell at me because it's going to assume, hey, maybe I, I didn't quite change the exposure values just, just right. But trust me, it'll still work. I've seen it do that before. That was just a bug in Lightroom. So now it's calculating the three images and trying to figure out the dynamic range of three images. Okay, the images have been merged and they have been auto aligned because I didn't shoot this on a tripod, this was handheld. So it could have gotten off kilter just a little bit because I am a human. And then you'd want to check here to make sure you don't have this the ghost and overlay shown shown. It will only confuse you. I mean, I'll click it on now and it just lets you see where it did this did a little bit of moving and calculation. So I turn that off and then I just make sure the quality is set to high and then I select merge. So if we look right here, here's the extra file and then you notice the file name says hdr.dng and this image looks a lot better let me change this view here one more time just to make it a little bit cleaner for us so we'll say metadata blue there all right so now if i look at the first couple of images one more time under middle overexposed and now these are completely merged. There's a big difference with getting those three images together. Notice the highlights, notice the shadows, and notice that there's plenty of detail in the tree leaves there, and it looks pretty good. So let's go into the develop side of this thing, and you'll notice that you'll have so much more flexibility. Lightroom did try to develop it a little bit more for me. I don't need it to have that much post-processing, so I'm just gonna reset it it's merged, but I am going to do my own post-processing. Now, watch what happens when I push the shadows up. I'm only pushing it up to, you know, roughly 50, and I'm getting a whole lot more leeway and a whole lot more headroom to play around with the shadows. So I can push it up a little more. I'll stop right about here at 60 or so. Same thing will go for exposure and highlights. I don't have to push it as far to properly get it exposed. 
The highlights are clipping just a touch, so I'm going to decrease them. And it's looking a lot better. Okay, and then I will take the dehaze and just dehaze it just a touch. And just to give it a little more life, I'm going to add some color vibrance and a little more color saturation. And now we are good to go. Just take a look at the sky. The sky is still a little bit hot right here in the center of the frame. Still a little bit hot. So I'm going to pull that highlight down just a little more. And when I do so, notice the sky, the blue in the sky, the cloud detail comes back. And that's only because this is in a high dynamic range. So let's compare it to these other ones again. This is overexposed where we have no uh, cloud, no cloud detail, no sky detail. This is middle exposure. We're still missing the details in the sky. The shadows are a touch dark and underexposed. Sky looks better, but the rest of the scene is totally, totally black and not going to work. But you can use a HDR uh, photo editor blender to blend these three images together and you're golden. Of course, I changed my horizon line. Yeah, I know how much I hate a crooked horizon line. There we go. Now we're getting better. All right. So that is it. That is getting some post processing in and an expl explanation of high dynamic range, also commonly referred to as HDR. I hope this has been helpful for all of you out there checking this out. Thank you for joining me each and every week here on the network. Every Thursday, that is. Uh, we try to get this out roughly between maybe three, 3 p.m. Pacific, something like that. Appreciate all of that support. Make sure you're telling everybody about the show that is interested in the world of photography and tell them to go back and start with the very first episode because I want to give you a breakdown of getting started and just build you up to where you'll just be so much more comfortable with using your smartphone camera or using any type of camera that you decide to buy. All right. Thank you all again. I will catch you all next week here on the network. Now it's your time. Get on out there. Create and dominate safely, but also be well and do well. Take care. Hey, I'm Jason Howell, host of Hands on Android, a techie look at how to customize your Android device as well as take a look underneath the hood and see what's really going on down there. You can subscribe by going to twit.tv slash HOA, or you can find Hands on Android in your podcatcher of choice.